What's up everyone, it's Scotty with Money Vesting. Welcome on board for another Market Open live stream. We are not looking too hot right now with the NASDAQ ETF QQQ down over 1.5%. Pre-market now trading under $375. We got the S&P 500 ETF SPY down about 1% and the Dow Jones ETF down about close to 90 basis points as well. So let me know if you guys can see me and hear me in the in the obviously in the video and just give me a thumbs up in the live chat if you guys can see me and hear me. So just want to make sure the video and the audio is working well. So Jason, welcome on board. Uh, Amazon Fork Friday in 2022. Yes, it is going to happen. I can feel it. Uh, so perfect. Can see me and hear me perfect. Awesome. So I'm going to give it a few more minutes for people to join and then get started with the morning presentation. Volatility is higher. So we're up a little bit over 12%, almost 13% in the green for the VIX trading back over 21 levels. We got Bitcoin once again, pulling back down about 1.7% back under $42,000. And I think Ethereum is also trading under 3,300 right now. So Ethereum is uh, actually trading under 3,200. So we're back down a little bit over 2.8% right now. So definitely been selling off. Yes, Activision with that Microsoft buyout popping up over 30 plus percent back over 85, close to $90 per share. That just goes to show that Activision was indeed undervalued at the low valuations that it was trading at. So there was uh, some mispricing in the market. And as a result, definitely seeing that big jump. We'll cover that here shortly. Oil prices have been on a soar here. So oil, both crude and Brent have been rallying higher. So if you come over to our energy watch list, so crude back over $84, $85 a barrel and Brent is back over $87 a barrel. This is in fact their seven year high that oil is actually hitting. So uh, welcome on board, everybody. Let's just quickly break everything down. And before we do that, I want to go over this, um, you know, quote, and this is from the book Psychology of Money, page 118. And this is from Morgan Housel. So you can definitely check out that book as well. Uh, but the quote is the historical odds of making money in the U.S. markets are 50 50 over one day periods. So if you're day trading, it's a 50 50 odd. Of course, you know, you can you can have find very, very good trade setups, which can push the odds in your favor. But 68 uh, percent over one year periods. 88% in the 10 year periods and so far 100% odds of making money in the US markets over a 20 year period. So again, just a little bit of a reminder to have that long term focus, having that vision in the markets, not really um, panicking over these day to day fluctuations. Yes, the Nasdaq's down about one and a half percent pre market. Yes, it's an official correction down about eight, almost 10% from all time highs. But that doesn't change anything from a long term perspective. Another thing that I want to go over, which is, again, a quote from this book, which is from page 80. Um, and this was also very, very interesting. So at Berkshire Hathaway shareholder meeting from 2013, Warren Buffett said he's owned 400 to 500 stocks during his life and made most of his money on 10 of them. Think about that for a second. 500 stocks, right? 10% of that is going to be about 50, right? 1% is going to be 5 so out of the 500 stock that he's owned in his lifetime, he's only made money on 2% of those, which are 10. And Charlie Munger followed and said, if you remove just a few of Berkshire's top investments, its long-term track record is pretty average, right? That just goes to show that they were so bullish on the 10 or 12 or 15 names that ended up making or, or essentially realizing most of their profit potential. You know, Apple is definitely gonna be one. Coca-Cola is certainly gonna be one. Uh, there's been plenty of stocks that have actually not done for Warren Buffett and Berkshire Hathaway as well, but they've stuck to their process. They have analyzed several thousands of companies and chose 500 to own over their lifetimes, and only 10 turned out to be very, very profitable uh, and successful for them as a result, kind of overshadowing all the losses they've taken over the years. So a couple of quotes I wanted to uh, go over, um, uh, just you know, kind of get us back on the right track. But U.S. stock futures fell Tuesday. The Dow Jones was down a little bit over 1% before the open. Hit by Goldman Sachs dropped on disappointing earnings. And Nasdaq was tracking for about a 1.5% drop. Open as bond yields, short end and the long end on the curve, move higher. The two-year Treasury yield broke about 1% for the first time since February 2020. So these right here are going to be all the yield curves or pretty much the bond yields that we need to keep a close track on. And the yield curve is basically the two-year right here. 
which just broke over 1%, and the 10 year, which is gonna be all the way down here, which is now trading at well over 1.829. So if you do some very quick math here, so we're looking at 1.829 minus one, what was it? 1.014, so 1.014, we're looking at a difference of about 81 basis points, right? That's the difference between the long dated bonds, which is a 10 year versus a short dated bonds, that's two years. If this difference minimizes, if the, the, this difference comes down from let's say 81 basis points down to 75, down to 60, down to 50, down to 40, that is gonna be alarming for the economy because uh, you know that's essentially the yield curve flattening It eventually will invert if uh, well, the two years starts yielding more than the 10 year. And that's going to signal us into a recession, which obviously has accurately predicted a recession uh, time and time again in the past. So that's that. Microsoft to buy Activision Blizzard in a $68.7 billion all cash deal. So Microsoft pulling out the big guns and essentially buying an all cash deal for Activision Blizzard, spending about $68.7 billion. Uh, they announced Tuesday that it'll buy the video game giant Activision Blizzard, $68.7 billion cash deal. Uh, shares of Activision soared about 37% in pre-market. In Microsoft, shares fell more than 2% following the announcement. And Activision is known for popular games like Call of Duty and Tony Hawk's Pro Skater has been mired in controversy over the last several months. But nonetheless, uh, the, the company itself has been trading at very, very low valuations. So uh, it, it's only justified that it's trading a little bit of a 37% premium right now. Uh, bank earnings continue to disappoint uh, with Goldman Sachs reporting a fourth quarter earnings miss as operating expenses. Remember, this operating expenses surged 23% from year over year, right? So JP Morgan had the same issue, right? They're having pretty significant costs when it comes to labor costs and shortages of analysts. They they're have to pay more money to these analysts to bring them on the door and bring them to their jobs. So, you know, that's the operating expenses, right? That's their SGNA, that's their R&D, that's their selling general administrative expenses. So they're spending a lot more money um, on, on those things, right? So operating expenses going up, profits and earnings are actually going down. That's why an earnings mess. Um, and JP Morgan CFO said the company would likely miss key profit targets over the next two years as well um, because of these operating expenses going higher. So that's uh, one of the big reasons why banks are not doing as well. Oil prices hit more than a seven year high as uh, after the attack on UAE. So US international oil prices hit more than a seven year high Tuesday after the United Arab Emirates vowed to retaliate against Yemen's Iran aligned healthy group up for Monday's deadly attack on its capital, Abu Dhabi. Uh, the UAE is the third largest oil producer member of OPEC, world's seventh biggest oil producer, pumping just more than 4 million barrels per day. Uh, but overnight, uh, you know, crude jumped over 2% to 85.56 per barrel. So oil prices definitely going a lot higher and Exxon, Chevron, they've been benefiting. Energy still up over double digits year to date. So going over some upgrades and downgrades very quickly here. Goldman Sachs reiterates Boeing as a buy. Then we got Deutsche Bank reiterating Apple as a buy, raising price target to $200 per share, coming from $175. Credit Suisse raises price target on Tesla close to $1,025 from $830. Uh, then we got Bank of America reiterating Netflix as a buy. Morgan Stanley upgrades Zscaler to overweight from equal weight. Got Morgan Stanley downgrading Gap to underweight from equal weight. Gordon Haskett downgrades Airbnb to hold from buy. We got Goldman Sachs initiating coverage on SoFi as neutral. So we forecast to realize 37% of four-year adjusted revenue CAGR with $1.1 billion of EBITDA by 2025 for SoFi. Uh, we got City opens a positive catalyst to watch on Intel. So Intel does have earnings coming up. Um, and given the upside of Intel's 50% exposure to PC market, we are raising estimates on Intel. We are raising our 21 revenue EPS estimates to 73.5 billion and $5.29 to 73.7 billion and $5.32 respectively for 22. William Blair upgrades Snowflake to outperform for market perform. And then we got Argus upgrading Delta Airlines to buy from hold as well. So, Five minutes left for market open. We're gonna quickly go up to our four split screen. I did do some buying today. So again, if you're part of our Patreon and Discord, you might've seen a ton of alerts go out uh, because I did do some shopping pre-market. Um, so let's see, Devong, what are you saying that I mentioned in the previous video? Uh, let me know. So Evelyn, well, I think we expect 2% on the 10 year yield. Yes, so 2% is very much possible on the 10 year yields without a doubt. Um, this year, I think there's a lot of analysts that are projecting a two-year 2% 2 on the 10-year yields, which is going to be the levels from uh, pretty much back from October of 2019, right? That's the last time you actually saw 2%, almost 2% was that, back in August 2019 is what we saw. 
So that's going to be the level to watch very closely. We have certainly seen a big move in 10 year yields. And this is again, this is March and, and, and February of last year when the yields were much higher. And we saw that rotation kicked off away from away from growth and momentum over to value and some stocks and many stocks in that growth and momentum sector still yet to recover from those sell offs. But big, big move in the yields once again, coming in from like August of 21 and then just been pushing higher now starting to compete with the S&P 500 yield and competing with the uh, the discounted cash flow models for a lot of these growth companies as well. So present value of all future cash flows are becoming less and less worth as the risk free rate, which in this case, is the 10 years are going higher. Volatility stays up, up over 12.8, almost 13%. We're still not quite at 25, 26 levels, but um, if you do get up there, I would definitely, you know, be, be a, more of an aggressive buyer uh, for a lot of stocks. Um, yeah, so Jay says for acquisitions, the acquiring company tends to go down on announcements while the company being acquired goes up. That's not always true, really depends on how much they're paying for that company. So in this case, Microsoft already said they're going to be paying about 68, 69 billion dollars for Activision Blizzard. And you'll notice that AT ATVI uh, close at $50 billion, right? So they have that upside there because in the market, now you're putting a price target on Activision Blizzard, right? That's the most important thing is that now based on the analysis, based on Microsoft's potential uh, buying target here, Activision Blizzard, they actually come out and put a price target, market price target on Activision. So it's just going to trade at those levels. If it's confirmed, it's pretty much going to trade flat at around $86, $87 per share. So, and of course, if they buy it at a discount, if they buy it at a lower price and the market price and the stock will fall, right? So it depends on where, what price target they're putting on that uh, particular stock that they're buying. Um, let's see. So, all right. I'm just catching up on all these uh, comments here. So let's see. Love the quote, Nisha. That's awesome. That's great. I'm going to actually post these couple of quotes in our discord. I'm going to continue to kind of bring up these quotes from the books that I'm reading. So I think it's going to be very helpful, kind of keep us all on the same page. And of course, at the same time, um, you know, the markets are going to do what they're going to do on a day to day basis, but we always have a long term view um, and what we want to do. So Oracle raised all their gains after their announcement of their acquisition of Kerner. So let's take a look at where Oracle is. So Oracle, yeah, definitely been selling off. It had a huge gap up, right? So right after the earnings, it gapped up over 15%. And right now we are just selling off over 18%. We got less than a minute left for the markets to open. I want to hear from you guys. What are your thoughts, red or green for the markets today? What do you guys think we're going to see for the markets? Let me know in the live chat. What are your thoughts? On the same page. Oh my God. <laughs> yep. Yep, all on the same page. But no, I would highly encourage you guys to at least check out those books, right? There's there's a ton of books um, that are super helpful, at least from like a from an investment standpoint. Uh, but all right, so we got plenty of reds. Uh, YC says red to green, so pretty bold prediction there. Um, Baron says three percent down. Uh, Brian says green. So Ben says very green. Wow, that's uh, that's quite a bold prediction because we may have to go up like you know three percent or more to go from like this much red for the Nasdaq to be like very very green to close out the day. All right, five seconds left. Let's take a quick look. We got Neo down a little bit close to three percent, just over thirty dollars. Um, and then we have so Neo is going to be over here. We're going to keep Tesla right there. And we got NVIDIA down about 2.6 and AMD is down about 1.6 as well. Costco now under 500. Oh, I really, really want to get in on Costco very, very, very soon here because I've done an analysis on Costco as well. I think it's got a phenomenal uh, business, long-term growth and, and just a lot of retail potential that it has. Uh, definitely has seen a big breakdown from this 50 EMA and now starting to break down below that 100 simple moving average as well. This is going to be the first support level I'm watching close to 470 for Costco. So that's going to be the level to watch. All right, off we go. Uh, there we go. The Nasdaq down about one and a half percent here. We got the S&P down about one percent and the Dow Jones dropping over 1.2 percent. I think this is primarily because of Goldman Sachs and some of the banking stocks reporting their numbers. But let's take a quick lap on the markets. Everything is red. Activision Blizzard is the only stock that's green. Take two is higher. So up over 3.6%. Um, so, all right. So starting with the most red to the least red here, I'm just going to give it a minute for the markets to settle in. And uh, then we'll take a look. 
Yes, so we can take a look at Palantir, we can take a look at Apple, we'll take a look at... Uh... So Maxim, do you sell Activision now or wait for the actual deal to go through? It really depends on you know, your thesis or your sort of like time horizon with Activision Blizzard. So, you know, the company was undervalued. Needless to say, it was trading at low valuations when we first analyzed the stock. I think I've done a video on that as well. But the only risk that I pointed out was the sexual harassment case that was going on. I think the company's also fired certain executives. Uh, but take a look at this, right? 19 times earnings. We're trading at less than six times sales, 17 times cash flow, and 12 times price to enterprise value to EBITDA. So those multiples, very low valuation. I think the growth was still decent for the company. So needless to say, it was undervalued. Now, based on this, I think they are going to be closing the deal in 2023. I could be wrong, but I think they are closing or planning to close uh, in 2023. Uh, the acquisition will make Microsoft the third largest gaming company in the world by revenue behind Tencent and Sony. The deal, which is expected to close in the fiscal year 2023, right there, has been approved by the boards of directors of both companies and will uh, be accredited to non-GAAP earnings per share. So again, it really depends if you want to wait that long for a deal to go through and then be acquired by Microsoft or if you want to take your profits now um, and then switch over to Microsoft for gaming because eventually Activision will be a part of Microsoft. So uh, really depends, you know, what your what your thesis is. For now, I mean, the market cap's at 67 billion, right? So you'll notice that it's literally trading at the same level as what they're buying it for. 68.7 billion, right, is the market cap that they're buying it for. Uh, all ca like all cash deal, right? So um, that it's right now it's trading at 67 and a half billion. So just about a billion off from where they're actually planning to buy. It. And the price has fallen, right? From 87 dollars, it's come down to 85.90. So it's literally trading at uh, at the same market cap as what Microsoft is planning to buy. Activision in 2023. So you're pretty much at fair value now, um, you know, for Activision. So you might see some profit taking here. So there might be some red candle on a green day. That's very normal. Um, but let's take a look. Let's take a look at the markets here. Um, and then we'll also switch over to our, you know, our, our horse race, I like to call it. And that's going to be select sector S&P 500 index and see what's actually doing well. Uh, we got VIX up over 14% and the 10 year yields up over 2.8%. On a five-day basis, energy continues to charge higher. Energy is up, well, VIX is up, and then followed by energy. I'm going to hide volatility here just a second so I can take a look. Um, so, yeah, let's see. Uh, over that time period, we have U.S. 10-year yields pushing higher, up over 5%. Then we got silver, big jump in silver. Let me just take a quick look in SLV. Um, so, silver... It's going to be this one. So yeah, silver is up 1.7. It's been pushing higher from just under $22 per ounce. Uh, it's seen a jump of 6.6% over the last, I would say, like week. So silver definitely pushing higher. How is gold doing? I'm surprised that we're actually covering commodities. We haven't really covered commodities much. But um, but yeah, silver pushing higher with that spike that you see. Energy still coming down. However, it has done well since the beginning of this year, since this last couple of weeks here. Um but Ethereum, Bitcoin, obviously very, very low. Biotech continues to struggle here year to date. So NASDAQ down close to 1.7% here. Biotech bleeding, yes. Amazon and Google, let's take a quick look. So AMD down close to 2%. NVIDIA down now to 260. Uh, Tesla's flat uh, to 1,025 right now. NEO still down about 3%. Apple is down about 84 basis points, not as bad, not as bad as some of the other stocks. Amazon, wow, big drop for Amazon, down about 2.5% down to 31.60 right now. So definitely breaking down Amazon once again. I mean, this is the level that we've seen from January 10, so definitely seeing a breakdown here. And we got the S&P coming back down to those lovely prices. 45.30 is gonna be that level to watch uh, for Amazon next. So take two will next to be bought up. Yeah, I mean, it could happen. Take two interactive. I think they've got a much better pipeline of games. Um, if I were to pick between GTA and Call of Duty, I would certainly pick a GTA. Uh, I think Grand Theft Auto is much more intuitive. It's a much better sort of gameplay. And, you know, that's just me. Again, let me know what you guys think. But I think take two interactive has got better um, sort of pipeline for games that they have than Activision Blizzard. Uh, when will Fiverr stop going down? I think it depends on the valuation. A lot of companies have been selling off um, due to the valuation. I just want to take a look at a couple stocks today. Um, those are InMode and Coinbase, INMD. So InMode is down 4.6%. This is a stock that we did start a new position in pre-market. I did end up buying a little bit of InMode and Coinbase also 
I started a small position in. Again, this is a new position we have uh, traded Coinbase before. Uh, but as I said in my previous video, we ended up exiting in the 340s. And now the valuation is just ridiculously cheap for Coinbase. I mean, I can't ignore Coinbase uh, at these levels. So 220 right now is where it's trading at 221, 215 is going to be that next level of support for Coinbase at the moment. But you know, you'll notice that this sell off obviously was mostly regarded to Bitcoin's sell off. So starting November 10th, Coinbase has fallen about 40%. And guess what? Bitcoin's also down close to 40%. So same exact price action for both Bitcoin and Coinbase. Uh, but I like the company. Growth has been very strong. Um, and uh, it's just coming down to very, very low valuations. Ian says, bro, I'm a COD fan. I like COD. I don't, don't get me wrong. I play Call of Duty Mobile all the time. But if I were to pick between the two, what would you pick? GTA 5 or Call of Duty, right? What, where's the decision there? But I do like Call of Duty. Don't get me wrong. I play it on my phone all the time. Um, all right, let's take a look at dividend stocks. So Walgreens is flat, down about 1%. Let's just go to our dividend watch list here. So, wow, they're all red for the most part with AT&T, the only stock that's up over half a percent. But we got JP Morgan continues that sell-off down about 2%. Uh, we got Pfizer down about 1.2%. Realty Income Corp down about 1%. Walgreens, Coca-Cola, 3M, Lockheed Martin, Johnson, Johnson, Verizon. Uh, everything is down in the red at the moment. So, so yeah, I mean... Wow, so growth stocks, momentum continues to struggle. We got the NASDAQ down close to 2%, S&P down 1.5%, and the Dow Jones falling over 545 points. Uh, let's take a quick look on how much we are down from all-time highs. S&P, wow, close to 5%. So we're still not in an official correction for the S&P. I think once the S&P comes down to an official correction, which is 8% or more, I think that's where things are going to start to get a little bit more serious for the markets. I think the NASDAQ is in an official correction. We are down close to 10% from all time highs. I think that's a very healthy correction. And you guys know the level that I'm waiting for, right? This is the level 14,150 is the level that I'm waiting for. Because you know, as we went over on this chart for the NASDAQ, you'll notice that that is a level that is the only level I want you guys to watch for the NASDAQ. Previous resistance got rejected a couple times, which in turn became a support, support, and that is a level that I feel like the NASDAQ is just, you know, waiting for the price to come down, test that level, and then see some recovery. But overall, I mean, this has just been a very, very downtrending pattern for, for the NASDAQ in general, right? We've just been consistently making lower highs and lower lows. Um... Let's see. Let's take a look at Vertex. What is the stock doing right now? Uh, just down about 1%. Nothing nothing crazy. 231. Um, so yes, uh, TQQ as well. Uh, let's take a quick look. I'm waiting for about $58. That's the level um, that I'm watching for, for, the, for TQQ. And that's kind of in line with the NASDAQ's analysis. So 14200 14,100, that's a level to watch. You know, this is, if I were to give you one one level to watch on the NASDAQ, I would certainly give you 14,200, like right there, 14,100. Previous resistance and the support, I think once we come down to that level, we would be down about 12% from all-time highs, close to 13%. I think that's probably in the short term going to be that bottom. Um, again, I don't want to call bottoms because it's almost impossible to predict where the market's going to bottom out. But I think that's a very, very high probability um, level that we can see the Nasdaq test and then bounce off those levels. Previous, previously, like three times, two twice, we've actually validated that level. So, I think traders, investors are going to be watching that very closely. Yes, so T Triple Q, I think is going to be the one to watch uh, also as the Nasdaq corrects, Ranjit. So I, I do agree. I mean, if, if the Nasdaq comes down 13% plus, I think T Triple Q would be an easy play for me to dollar cost average into. But just remember that this is going to be a riskier play. There's going to be a plenty of decay if the markets continue to sell off or consolidate. Then, uh, then certainly the odds are not in your favor uh, for T Triple Q. But if you have a strong thesis, if you believe the markets are going to recover for the Nasdaq, which I do think eventually then yes, there can be there can be tremendous profits to make. So, all right. So ARC is in the bear trend. Where's the bottom? ARC, man. They have just been very, very... I mean, in the short term, if you look at a year, two years maybe, ARC has not been not been doing well at all. I mean, they've just... They, they haven't even seen what it's like to be up uh, over the last year, year and a half. But if you compare... Over the last five years, they've done really well, right? 
they've still done very well. If you if you compare it with the S&P 500, they have very much outperformed uh, over the last five year period, over the last seven year period. But of course, over the last year, year and a half, they've been very, um, very performing very poorly. All right, so Nasdaq, not bad, seeing some recovery back up. Dow Jones still down about 1.5% and S&P is still down about 1.3%. Uh, many stocks are down AMC down close to 7%. That's unfortunate. Uh, back under $20 here for everybody that may be holding. And then we got Robinhood hitting a new 52 week low. Mara is down about 4.2%. Peloton, Alibaba, Coinbase, Palantir up to just over $15. Uh, Neo, Facebook, Facebook having a pretty, pretty brutal day right now. <laughs> we got it to Facebook here pre market, but wow, down about to 320, down about 29% here. Uh, let's see. Kathy's in the woods, literally. <laughs> I think that can be a meme. That can be a really good meme. The Kathy is literally in the woods right now. Yeah, I mean, it's it's crazy, man. Like, I gotta be honest. That's holding Arc. Like Arc, they gotta they gotta stick with their thesis. Because this is a tough time. And, you know, it's times like these when you just look back to. This is hindsight. We're living the hindsight right now. And all people say, like, in hindsight, we should have done that. I think we're living hindsight right now. Because Kathy Wood, it's a very, very interesting thesis. You know, I have a lot of respect for what she has to say. She's got a different point of view. You don't hear that very often, right? On CNBC, you hear, like, you know, which sectors are going to do well, what the economy is going to look like. But she's got a whole different point of view, which... You gotta, you gotta give it to her. Like she's, she's very bold in in some of the decisions she makes, and I do think there's a small probability that she may come out on top. At least, obviously, nobody knows. Only time will tell. But a small part of me thinks that she's still gonna prevail over the long term. She's still gonna prevail over the long term. In the short term, sure. There's, there's so many things that can happen. But we're talking like four or five years out, right? So. Because now that you think about some of the holdings as well, I mean, Coinbase, Zoom, can't speak for Teladoc and some of those other companies, but a lot of them have been really de-risked, right? A lot of them actually are trading at very reasonable valuations, including Zoom. I feel like I look at Zoom right now, I'm like, what is the stock trading at 158 for, right? The market cap is at 47 billion. And look at the revenue growth. Look at the earnings growth. Just phenomenal numbers. Valuation's reasonable. Same thing with Coinbase. Same thing with... Um, you know, a lot of other stocks that we've looked into. So it's going to be interesting. So, all right, bothering me is that I might buy stocks that will fall so much that recovery might take years. Um, it is very much possible, but, you know, in my view, if as long as you are keeping a close eye on the revenue growth, right, there's certain things that you need to always keep track of is the top line sales growth for the company, bottom line earnings growth, the margins, the EBITDA, like those are the fundamentals. If they're still on the right path, right? Think about PayPal. A lot of people think that right now buying PayPal, the recovery is going to take years, right? It's going to take a long time. And that very well may be true. But if the valuation continues to come down, it is going to be far better than holding on to a stock that is very, very overvalued, right? Trading at a much higher multiple because that has significant amount of risk for going down over the next two to five years, right? If it doesn't perform up to Wall Street expectations for revenues and earnings. With companies like PayPal, with other companies that are trading at low valuations, at least you have that cushion that, okay, it's already trading at such low valuations. The worst thing that happens is that it's going to consolidate. It's going to just trade flat, right? Even if they don't perform as well, it'll trade flat because the valuation is so low, right? So the margin for risk significantly decreases when you buy stocks that are trading at low valuations that are trading at very undervalued levels, right? For So a simple example I can give you is Vertex Pharmaceutical, right? Buying in the 170s, 180s had like to a point where the valuation was so low and the revenues were so strong and growing every quarter that it had some level of confidence that, okay, if it doesn't do anything, at least it's going to trade sideways, right? At least it's going to be in the 180s, 170s range. Um, even if the, even if, you know, Wall Street doesn't like the stock, even if they continue to kind of um, perform poorly, at least it's going to trade sideways because it's trading at about fair value. 
Uh, let's take a look at Visa. So Visa actually, by the way, I forgot to mention, Amazon came out and said that they're no longer banning the credit cards issued by Visa in the UK. So, you know, that's a, that's a pretty good catalyst for Visa, but obviously <laughs> the stock price is doing anything but. Um, we're seeing a decent rally back higher for the S NASDAQ right now. So decent jump back higher. Uh, S&P still struggling and Dow Jones obviously struggling quite a bit um, right now. So coin is a good buy 190. Yeah, we'll love to get it under $200. I think if it comes down, I think that would be even better valuation for the growth for revenue and earnings here. Um, so can you imagine PayPal is at the same level as Vertex in the 170s level? Yeah, I mean, I mean, in terms of the price, sure, 170s right now, but in terms of valuation, there's like night and day because I think Vertex is still a 50 or 60 billion dollar market cap. Uh, Vertex is about 58 billion. Yeah, so 58 billion and PayPal, I think, is like four times bigger at 200 billion. So 209 billion. So, um, I like that Caddy mentioned it anyways impacts one to two percent of our revenue. Yes, yeah, so I've done a video on Visa as well. Uh, it doesn't quite affect that much because when you break down Visa's revenue um, in terms of total payment volume and the transactions that they do, I think the UK market and when you drill down the credit card market in the UK. And plus, it's only Amazon. It's a very, very low amount. It's like, I think less than 2% is when we looked at it. So uh, let's take a look at TTCF. So Tattooed Chef uh, having a decent day, looks like. Up over 2%, not bad. On a day like today, when the entire market is red, Tattooed Chef coming to the rescue, up over 2%. So Take Two's up, Tattooed Chef is up, Foot Locker. Um, and, and yeah, that's it. Visa, PayPal are pretty much flat. Those are the stocks that are doing okay on the watch list that I have. But, uh, but yeah, there's plenty of stocks that are still down quite a bit um, and, and selling off. So, so yeah, I mean, overall, I think the markets seem to be hurting a little bit, at least on the growth and momentum side. Value is not so much. So let's see how recovery stocks are doing. So recovery... <laughs> All red except for Exxon Mobil, which is higher on energy prices. Chevron also higher on energy prices. But then we got uh, Carnival Cruise Lines, we got Bank America, Norwegian, uh, American Airlines, um, Disney, all pretty much red here. Yes, Anchor Costco uh, watching. Watching very closely, 470 is that next support. I'm very interested. Uh, you guys already know the thesis behind Costco. I think it's got a decent, decent yield, but the growth has also been very good. I think the valuation did get ahead of itself. So, you know, 44 times earnings, 24 times cash flow, enterprise value EBITDA 23. I think that's not bad, but valuation in terms of price to earnings definitely got way too out of hand. Share dilution hasn't been really that much. So, very, very good in terms of share dilution here. And then income and revenue and income has also been on a consistent growth here nicely for Costco. So I do like the fundamentals, um, you know, but RSI oversold, MACD oversold. This was the rising wedge pattern, which we obviously got the breakdown from. Uh, but I'm watching 470 next. 470 is the level to watch. LUV, so Southwest, how is it doing? So just holding up. Got a resistance at 46.50. Need to kind of break out of that resistance for Southwest. Uh, Costco 470 easy. Yeah, I think that should be a very, very nice level. Home Depot down close to 3%. This is also on my watch list. Kind of similar to Costco. I have to do a complete fundamental analysis on this company, but uh, watching 340. I think that's the level to watch for the company. This right here was a nice bull flag breakout for Home Depot. So you'll notice that we were already pushing higher. Uh, over here, this was a nice push higher. Then we consolidate sideways with a huge breakout. We got tagged at this double top resistance at 418, and right now we're just coming back down. So 340 is a level that I'm watching for uh, Home Depot. Satya, did you buy in mode? You got to be in our Discord to find that out. I'm just kidding. Yes, I did. Um, how low do you think NVIDIA will go? Uh, interesting question. It's kind of hard for me to answer because, you know, technically, uh, there's been a lot of demand for NVIDIA right at that 100 SMA. I mean, the last time we were here, we just got a little bit of a spike. Uh, but fundamental-wise, valuation-wise, I think it still trades at somewhat of a rich valuation. So I think I'm watching that 200 SMA next down to 218. That's all that I'm watching. But, you know, we got a previous resistance here, which could also act as a support at 230s. 
uh, but $218 down to that 200 SMA, I think would be a much, much better price as we have validated that 200 SMA a couple times coming in from March 21 and then May 21 as well. So, all right. Amazon, let's see how the stock is doing. So we are still down about 2.3%. We're literally at that support at roughly 3170, 3175 around those levels. Um, S&P continues to make a new low of day. NASDAQ, not so much. We are consolidating sideways and the Dow Jones also consolidating for the most part. Uh, volatility is much higher, up over 16.5% now. And then let's take a look at individual companies. Tesla starting to push higher, up down just about 1%. Uh, Amazon still down. How is Neo doing? Neo also getting bought up here, still down about 1.5%. So we're seeing some move in the EVs as Tesla and Neo get pushed higher, NVIDIA and AMD trading almost identical to each other. Uh, they're still down about close to 3% for NVIDIA, down 2% for AMD at the moment. Um, Steve, so what's the story behind InMode? I know you made a video of Fundamental Assets, but I didn't really get what they are doing. So I would highly encourage you to check out those videos, but they really are providing the uh, equipment for a lot of the plastic surgeries, for a lot of uh, you know, sort of like plastic surgery and stuff. There's like a lot of surgical equipment that they provide uh, to different clinics, to different doctors, and a lot of, uh, you know, hospitals all over the U.S. So I think they're a company based in Israel. Uh, I think similar to Fiverr, they're also a company uh, out of Israel. But I would definitely check out um, that video um, where I've done like a deeper dive on the company. Facebook below 320. <laughs> Let's go. So $308 that support. So definitely been a lot of back and forth for Facebook. Uh, I think a lot of stocks, a lot of FANG stocks have just been trading sideways. So Apple, Amazon, uh, and Amazon, I also mentioned, this is our king of consolidation, right? So it hasn't really traded anywhere in over a year. So king of consolidation. <laughs> our crown jewel of absolutely not doing anything for us. So... Amazon has been crowned, guys. <laughs> King of consolidation. Um, I think more than Netflix, because Netflix at least had a breakout. Right? Netflix also traded sideways for a year before finally with this monstrous breakout over 38, 39%. So, <laughs> so that's that. And uh, I feel like Facebook is starting to, starting to behave a lot like Amazon as well. So you'll notice that we're just trading sideways. We'll see how long this lasts. We need some more direction from Facebook right now. It's just trading sideways. I think Google is also misbehaving. It's just trading sideways right now, not doing much, just back and forth in that range. So, so we'll see. So we'll see. Google and Facebook, you guys need to do something. Otherwise, you will also be crowned. Datadogs, DT, DDOG. Um... So Datadog down close to 30 basis points, not, not all that much, but revenue growth very strong on a quarter over quarter basis. Here over year basis is very strong as well. So 47 times sales, really high. Uh, we got 215 times cash flow, also very high, over 12,000 times enterprise value to EBITDA. So, so yeah, needless to say, this is at a very, very high valuation at the moment. Let's just take a quick look at some of the moving averages. I was under 4K. Uh, Datadog right now trading at just at that 200 SMA. So that, that could be seen as a very, very strong support for the company. We are down close to 31%. So on a technical basis, sure, that can be a nice support and we can see a nice uh, reversal trade here. But on a fundamental basis, on a valuation basis, I wouldn't touch it from a long-term perspective. So, you know, if you do plan on taking a very, very short swing trade, I would, you know, set up the price here. Stop loss just under that 200 SMA under 130 with a profit target roughly in the 160s or even higher at close to this $185. So that's a good, decent trade setup. But again, fundamentals and valuations will eventually play a huge role. And uh, based on those things, I would not uh, take a long-term position right now. So Netflix waiting um, right now. I think 505, closer to 500 bucks, which has acted as a previous support, all the way down to 475. Those are the levels to watch. I think, you know, down another 2% right now. RSI has just been 
you know, a couple more red days like this and RSI would be all the way down here and we won't, it won't even be visible. I mean, it would be like under 2018, like down in the trenches <laughs> by itself. So I think it definitely needs some love um, soon, but $500 down to 475 are two support levels that I'm watching. Upstart, this is a stock that we haven't gone over. So it went from $105 getting bought up. So, wow, a lot of buyers kind of stepping in for Upstart. Dow continues to struggle here, down about 1.5%, S&P down 1.5%, and the NASDAQ down 1.75 as well. Shopify, let's take a quick look. We haven't gone over Shopify. Down about 3.88%, coming down to support at 1,038 levels, roughly. Software skyrocketing, outperforming everything. Which are software as a sector or software a company? Which one are you talking about? Let's take a look at Crowd. So CrowdStrike pushing higher today. Very, very nice. Up over 1%. So I think, you know, today also can be regarded as one of those days where FANG stocks are pretty much bringing down the S&P, the NASDAQ. Um, and NVIDIA, of course, is kind of like in that same category. Um, Amazon obviously playing a big role in the Nasdaq's downtrend. Um, so we got Nvidia, Amazon, some of the big, big sort of like tech companies. Apple down one point three percent, which is a pretty big move in Apple's price. And then Tesla close to one percent, which is not as much. Um, but Activision Blizzard, I mean, giving up most of the most of those gains. Uh, you know, Tattooed Chef, I'm really surprised. It's up over three percent right now. Back over fourteen dollars. So, all right, guys, so I'm probably going to call it there. Uh, overall, the markets, uh, you know, obviously seem, I mean, S&P with another 52-week low. We got the Dow Jones with another, uh, not a 52-week low. God, no, I misspoke. I'm sorry. A new low of day, not a 52-week low. <laughs> that would be crazy. The new low of day for the S&P, right? So down to 45.87. Dow Jones also hitting a new low of day down to 35,333. Uh, and the Nasdaq also down about 1.75% with the volatility back over 22, pushing up over 16%. Uh, and oil prices continue to push higher as well. Uh, so what happened to Microsoft buying Discord? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. We haven't heard on that. But uh, yes, so meant very, very red. But nonetheless, thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate your guys' support. I'm going to jump over to our Discord to kind of answer some questions, send out some more alerts if I do plan on buying anything else. But thank you so much for being here. Uh, and this right here, of course, you know, is going to be the links down in the description below. If you want to join our private discord and our money investing community, get those buy and sell alerts, market updates, and the fundamental analysis course link is also going to be down in the description below with a 25% discount coupon code early bird. So thank you so much, everyone. Really appreciate you guys as always happy investing. Uh, and I will see you guys in the next live.